Hello, greeting, welcome to my channel. And today we are going to learn how to construct a dendrogram using molecular data in R statistical software. And to do that, we need five packages here. We need DBLYR, we need Adagenets, we need NAM, we need Dendextend and Circularize. These five packages are going to help us uh, construct our dendrogram using molecular data and if you haven't installed them use install.package function to do installation but if you have installed them let's use a library function and load them to the library and use them so I'm loading this in the library because I had already installed them after this the most important stage or the next stage is to import the data. We want to import the data that we want to use. Ignore, ignore the, the, other the other functions here and some packages. I want to import my molecular data. This is a, a data which has SNP markers of around 200 individuals and I've saved it in a CSV format. So I'm using ray.csv function and call it gd1 and then uh, I run that to import it and uh, because this data is large we cannot uh, view it because it's going to take us some minutes or some good seconds uh, I want to view the first five rows and the first five columns so that you can see how it is structured you can see uh, uh, across the, the columns, these are SNPs, and down the rows, these are individuals. In our work, we don't need these individuals, the name of individuals, so we remove them. This is the first column. So we are removing the first column using this command. We remove the first column and call it GD. The next, to confirm, this one we are confirming if we have really removed them. See, it's here. And now we want to convert our GD, that's our data, into a matrix. So for this kind of analysis, you convert your data into a, mat a matrix. I've done that. Then let's use GDist, this function here, GDist to make a genetic distance matrix. GDist stands for genetic distance matrix. And I'm going to use GD here, this GD, which we converted as a matrix. And I'm going to use my method number one and call it GDist1. Third. And now we have met the genetic distance. You see down here, saying that it's an A distance. So we have made a genetic distance using this function. And now the next thing is to know the optimum number of clusters which we may be willing to which we may be willing to work on and uh, we use this uh, df2 gen genin function uh, to create an object and call it object here obj and then we are going to use the gd data from our data which we call the matrix and the deployed is two, it's a deployed, and the separator is tab. We're going to use this object to find the maximum number of clusters, and we call it GRP group. We use find dot clusters. This find for uh, this find dot clusters function is going to help us find the maximum number of clusters that they represent our data. So we are going to use the object which we created here, and the maximum dot n dot cast is the maximum number of cluster we want is 20 and the number of PCA is 200 because we have around 200 individuals and scale is false you you run that so from here we have got this figure here and if you look carefully the lowest the lowest uh, Thing here is, uh, I think is found in around nine here. It's the smallest. 
a PIC. So it means we have nine clusters that represent well our our data. So you can put between nine, eight, and you can put either nine, ten, or eight. So any of those, okay. So I selected ten. So that's why down here you choose the number of clusters. I choose ten because I want them to be ten. Uh, you can put nine because the lowest is PIC. You can see BIC, the lowest is nine. But you can add one or subtract one. So I write ten. Then you press end on your keyboard down here to select that. So let's go to the next step, which is constructing the dendrogram. And here we we are using the H class function. This H class function hierarchical clustering. So we called here class for hierarchical clustering and use H class function to work on this genetic distance matrix which we constructed here, G distance. We worked on a genetic distance matrix and we are going to use a word.t method. And that one this by running this we have constructed uh, here called clusters but now we found that 10 10 clusters uh, are the optimum clusters that can uh, explain our data so we cluster them we use cut tree to construct 10 clusters this cut tree it's going to work on H class here, which we made, but now we want to want only 10 clusters. And then call cut tree 10. So we run that. And we can have now a summary of the cut tree dot uh, cut tree dot 10 here that we got. But you put it as a factor first so that after running we get this our our, our 10. 10 clusters, you know, the, you can see down here the first cluster is 20 individual, the second 21, as we go on, as we go on until you get 10, 10 clusters. The next thing we do now, we are about to finish our work, is to uh, construct this, uh, uh, this cluster, each cluster, as a dendrogram. After clustering this, now we construct it as a dendrogram. We use as dot dendrogram function and put here class this one here, which we said as ten clusters. You you run that, and then you plot the dend. We're plotting the dend. Our dendrogram is here. You can zoom it. This is our dendrogram that we have constructed from our marker data. But remember, we need to put labels here because in our data, we remove the first column, which is was having labels. But um, first of all, we, we set the size of the labels and the branch use, use set. Our dent, we set the dent, the label to a size of 0 0.5 and the branches a length of 2. So we run that. So we have set the label's size to 0 0.5 and the branch length of 2. And we are working on dent, this one here, dent here. We are using set function and we are giving it a name called dent. You can give it another name. Uh, now let's assign colors of our uh, of our branches. So we call it branch underscore curl. We have ten colors here. You can put your own. This is my colors that I just said. I'm not good. I don't know more colors. So this is the colors which I, I came across, and uh, you can use yours. That's a you run that branch color. And then you 
you color the branches now using this color just put then use this color underscore branches and we are working on then we're using this color branches function this here function here and this function is going to work on our dend here which we created up here and our dend as a, is going to have 10 groups and we are going to color the branches using branch underscore color here which we did set when we tell our branch underscore color it will read the 10 colors so we have 10 uh, then 10 clusters which we want and our color is plan branch underscore color we run that and now we want to put our labels our labels were in gd1 that we imported the first column was rs column so labels is gd the first column rs now we are going to uh, uh, we're going to uh, we are going to convert this as a numeric and then and then and then now we do the the actual coloring and construction of our dendrogram you see here uh, is our dend construct our dendrogram we use this we use the color underscore branches dend our case then we group labels true with us true then we plot and call it Wilfred dendrogram we have 10 clusters horizontal is true so that it faces horizontally so we run that on the weight here we have our dendrogram this our dendrogram has 10 clusters here so because you can't view this correctly we circularize this you use circularize underscore dendrogram we are circularizing this dend and we are going to call it mm, circular dendrogram and this are just a uh, specification like height and uh, labels we say they are true you put the labels true you run that and uh, okay now let's see so this is our circular dendrogram we have you can see there are 10 clusters let's start counting from this red one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and these are the labels your genotypes you can see they're here so i hope this was helpful and um, you follow it slowly and you will able to construct your dendrogram. Thank you very much.